Greetings, fellow drivers and car boosters. Rodamont here. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid. Episode 5, How to Find Cars. How does rereading re work for boredom? So skill books um, can't be reread. You'll just say, I already, it, it will give you a prompt of like, I already know all the information in this book. It's something like that. Um, and then things like crossword magazines and comic books and magazines will be consumed. Like once you read them, you will effectively delete the item upon reading it. Much the way that when you eat a banana, it doesn't give you a banana peel. It's just the banana is gone. As if you ate it, peel and all. Like you're a great ape or something. Oh, I have a few people following me. So I am going to place down my lazy chair and place down my TV so that I can try to stop them from wrecking the windows. Likely they're going to break the windows before I get to them. Clearly, hey, there we go. I stopped them from breaking the window. Did it the sketchy way, which was to run up and use myself as bait. Not something I would advise a new player to do, is it's unnecessarily risky. But I've done it so many times in Zomboid, I can get away with it. Sometimes it's like rules for thee, not for me. And this is one of those cases where it's like, I know what I'm doing, but like, if you're a new player, that could have ended up in tragedy pretty quickly. But I just didn't want to have to like, deal with yet another window that got busted. Oh, bringing in the TV and the lazy chair upstairs. So the TV can be used for entertainment until a week passes because broadcasts will stop like eight days into the apocalypse. And then um, the lazy chair is just a nicer place to sleep. Often what will happen if you sleep on something really nasty, like the office chair, is you'll wake up with neck pain. Um, it's not fatal or anything, but you know, it can be annoying. And you just don't sleep well in it. I'll put, um, I'm not gonna put this in the bathroom, even though technically the bathroom is the safer place to sleep. I'm gonna be putting it in this lounge area that I'm building up. I'll put the TV on the shelf. And then these TVs, uh, as I said, you could turn them on and right when you turn it on, you're probably going to want to reduce the volume to a minimum. Um, otherwise, they're like blaring and very loud and will draw zombies in unless that's something you want to do. There's multiple channels. Uh, but the skill channel would be life and living TV. And that uh, broadcasts skills for you uh, at certain time intervals throughout the day. Um, so it used to be that VHS tapes weren't a thing. And the meta was to watch as much life and living in the first week as possible, which was dreadfully boring um, and kind of sucked. And then there was mods that would set up VHS tapes for those shows. But now it's just built into native um, vanilla RimWorld, uh, Project Zombie, Jesus Christ. Um, so as you can see, there's a tape slot here and I can, I can grab that um, dead wrong tape that I grabbed and like stick it in here and play it. So if I hit play, it starts to play dead wrong, which is a, which is a skill tape, but it's also a little entertaining too. Uh, all right. I want to get back out there, use my daylight as well as possible. So I'm going to transfer everything else to the floor. And the other thing is, see how I have moderate exertion. There's ways to clear your exertion. You can either right click and sit on the floor. As you can see, sit on the ground, which recovers your exertion, or you recover exertion faster by doing that on a chair. So as you can see, I don't want to sleep, I want to rest. And that will clear the physical exertion more quickly. So see, it's the moodlet's already gone. Now, just because it's gone doesn't mean I'm not exerted. I'm going to make up numbers here for educational purposes, but let's say your exertion is on a scale of 0 to 100. The moodlet might only show... Once you drop below 80, just because the moodlet's gone, I could be at zero, or I, I could be at zero exertion, or I could be at like 20% exertion. 
I don't really know. Um, there are mods that will show you all of your like bars so that you can min max everything to a ridiculous degree. Um, I don't have any mods enabled, so that's not a thing I'm going to do. But, um, but yeah, if, if you're ever exerted, being exerted is going to be, make, make your life a lot harder to fight. So I like to clear exertion whenever there's a moment of rest. And then if I'm particularly exerted, I will even sit and read and use the time to catch up on a book. Now we're coming up pretty late at night. Um, so it might be worth, uh, turning in for the night. I'm going to, I'm going to search one more upstairs apartment before I do that though. Uh, and yeah, I saw the question, is there any usage for, for notebooks? Uh, so yeah, I mean, role-playing or multiplayer. You can write notes and notebooks for other players to, um, to follow up on. So it's like a to-do list, for instance, would be a good use of a notebook. Uh, hand torch is a useful tool. Oh, I can hear zombies next door. This seems to be an apartment that was not really set up, so it's sparse. I'm probably not going to find very much here. But it does help to be completionist, to clear everything. Because you never know. Sometimes you can find really important items in weird places. A twine is useful for trapping. Um, so I passed up on some twine earlier. Um, but twine... Um, can be used to make, like, box traps and the like, uh, for, for trapping. So, collecting twine, if you intend to do a lot of trapping, it, it might, might be helpful. I said I was only going to clear one of these, but this one was so empty, I might as well keep going. And these apartments actually wouldn't be a terrible place for me to sleep. Just because I have a base across the street doesn't necessarily mean... Like, I can get a better night's sleep on the beds in here. And, and these buildings, as long as I clear the second floors, are, like, relatively secure. Um, in terms of risk, you know, being on the second floor of any building is going to be better than being on the ground floor. Uh, so I just checked this radio. It does not have an emergency broadcast channel. Any radio I happen upon, I'm going to want to check in that way. Uh, the zombie is next door, I guess. Another metalwork magazine, other magazines, comic books. So here's another apartment that is not well set up. Um, I already have mechanics one and two. I already have trapping one. I don't need forging five. I will check this radio. Any radio has a chance to have the emergency broadcast channel. Um, and you have to put it on the ground and then check it. This one doesn't. And the, the, the frequency is randomized, uh, as I think I mentioned before, at the start of every, um, at every server. So I don't know what it is until I find one. Now, I could sleep in this twin bed. Um, it's not too close to the windows. I think it would be relatively safe, but I want to, uh, I want to make sure whatever's making that noise is not going to be a threat while I sleep. So I think they're in the second door, but I'll clear the first one first. No, maybe they're not. I'm going to use a flashlight, which is bound to your F key. Because I'm looking for a light switch here. Because I'm getting a little tired. As you can see, I'm drowsy. And as a result of being drowsy, um, visibility goes to hell. Oddly enough, I don't see a light switch. And it's very possible the zombie's in the door that is remaining in the room. Oh! Okay. A big hiking bag, shotgun shells, a double barrel shotgun, and a baseball bat. With a fresh hand torch. I think, I think they're in this room. Yep, they are. 
So I have the flashlight enabled or uh, being held, but I can just shove the zombie over and stomp them to death. I don't need to use a crowbar. Uh, where the hell is the light switch in this apartment building? I have no idea. Uh, but this zombie had a fresh denim shirt, which is a good backup for me. And then a sheet, which I can cover a window. Uh, soap is useful to um, to remove grime on your body. So that if you are... One of the reasons to remove blood when you're... Um, one second. So if, if I got, let's say... Uh, there, there, well, I'll put it this way. There's a few different non-trauma uh, injury type things that can affect you. So you can get a cold if you're out in the rain and don't dry off. Uh, there are traits that make you more resistant to colds. You could also just get a regular old infection that requires antibiotics. So the zombie infection is 100% um, uh, lethal. You know, if you get a zombie infection, it won't actually even show up on your health tab. What's going to end up happening is you'll become queasy and then depressed and then you just die and turn into a zombie. But there are normal infections, you know, like sepsis type things, just like infected wounds, which um, require bottles of disinfectant to fight wound infection. And you can get a wound infection from any injury. So let's say you use your elbow to smash open glass and you get cut. That cut will bleed and can get infected. And you can help to prevent infection by using disinfectants and sterile bandages. And then also just to be clean. So if, for instance, you if, if I got injured in some way, I could like right click on um, a sink and wash myself and wash my clothing to make sure that um, the blood on my clothing isn't going to infect me. All right. There's one last apartment to uh, clear out. Make sure it's safe-ish up here. Uh, my boredom is going down just because I'm in front of the TV. Let me very quickly mute that TV. I don't mind it being on. I just don't want to make a noise. I know I didn't go for that backpack in the last room. I'm gonna go back for it. So there's a rifle with rounds and uh, high heels with a saw and a rope. A very, very interesting uh, uh, collection of, of items that this occupant owned. Oh, so here's a bandage. Awesome. So the bandaid that I grabbed um, is, a one, is a single use. I don't, actually don't even have it on me. Whereas this bandage here is a multiple use. So you can uh, disinfect bandages by using a bottle of disinfectant on them or using boiling water. And a disinfected bandage, if I do it, uh, when applied to a wound, will help to disinfect the wound uh, upon application. So this sterilized bandage, I can, if I had a cut, I could put the sterilized bandage on the wound and it helps to skip the phase, skip the step of disinfecting the wound first. Um, so I really like to have a few sterilized bandages in my backpack at all times. So that if I do in the, in the case, in the rare case that I get injured, kind of laughable they say rare, but in the case that I get injured, uh, having a disinfected bandage on hand uh, can be really a lifesaver. All right, at this point, I'll probably end up going to sleep. Um, I'll probably end up going to sleep in one of these apartments upstairs. Rather than going back to the um, to the grocery store because it's just uh, nicer beds here, so I'm going to grab this corpse. I don't want to sleep with the corpse, especially given that they have a chance to reanimate and dump it outside. And uh, let's go ahead and um, utilize the big hiking bag. So this bike, big hiking bag is better than my normal hiking bag. It's bigger. Um, it's actually very close to the best bag that you can get in the game. And uh, I'm going to show you how to transfer between bags. So if I right click this bag and say equip it secondary, I'm going to be holding the bag and I know I'm in the dark. So let me go into this. I'm going to hold the bag in my, um, in my second hand. And then I can go to my current bag, this one, grab all the items and transfer it into the second bag. And these starred items are moving because I'm not de 
disposing of the starred items, the favored favorited items. I'm just transferring it from a bag in my inventory to a bag in my inventory. Uh, you can't really do this if you're like encumbered or whatever, but I'm not encumbered, so this is fine. Now, there's not much use for the other older bag. I can hold on to it if I want, but it's like not super important. And then I can um, put that new bag that I just filled up with all of the stuff that I had in storage on my back. And um, I'm going to favorite my hand torch and my crowbar. Um, but yeah, I can, I can hold on to this hiking bag or dump it. It that makes very little difference to me. The other weapons here are probably worth bringing back to the grocery store at some point. Um, the baseball bat and the, the shotgun and even the rifle next door. Uh, but they're not necessarily urgent. I can always come back for them. Plus the, the extra battery. Uh, unlike clothing, bags can't be torn up. So certain items that are made of like fabrics are not fabrics that you can tear up. So, uh, namely bulletproof vests aren't made of a material that you can salvage. There's no such thing as like tearing it up and getting Kevlar, for instance. Uh, same with bunker clothing, uh, for firemen. So firemen clothing can't be repaired and maintained in the way that leather, denim, or cloth can. So it's like cotton. Cotton is the lowest tier, goes up to denim, which is the second tier, and then leather is the best sort of like maintainable clothing. So if I had like fireman pants, I couldn't sew leather into them. Whereas if I had like denim pants, I could. So certain clothing can't be modified. Uh, so boots can't be modified. Helmets can't be modified. Bulletproof vests can't be modified. Uh, and then like fireman gear can't be modified. And there's some other, there's, there's some other clothing that can't be modified like that as well. But generally that's the list. All right, let's sleep and hope that I wake up without a zombie in my face. Another matter event off in the distance. But I woke up without incident. All right. Uh, how about we bring some of this stuff back to base? Ooh, some hot sauce. So drinking hot sauce on his own sucks, but like adding it to food that you're cooking with is nice. Uh, there's also fresh fried chicken here. Sure. And frying pans. I'm going to grab a frying pan because I can cook with it. It's also like a weapon, makeshift weapon. A meat cleaver I can cook with. So, for instance, back in the base, I have a ham on me somewhere. And I can cut up that ham with the cleaver. Now I can slice it using a meat cleaver, hunting knife, kitchen knife, machete, or stone knife. So that meat cleaver helps me to, um, uh, rat, uh, help, helps me to, like, you know, not eat ham like I'm some sort of Neanderthal. Uh, but it will also let you cut a lot of things. I'm not going to worry too much about the canned goods here because the canned goods will be here and I can always come back at some future point to loot. So what I'm going to be focusing on is just grabbing things that I want to bring home now. And I never really checked this area all that closely. So like produce uh, or useful tools. So rope is a useful tool. I don't... I have three hand torches now, I think. So I'm going to get rid of this um, somewhat used up one. Used up batteries and just keep grab the fresh one. There is a version of a better flashlight that is way more luminous, which is yellow. Uh, and I'll be keeping an eye out for it. And I'll also grab the, um, the rifle and the ammo. I'm not likely to use a rifle and ammo anytime soon, but I might as well have it for later. Um, so I'll give a little spiel about firearms. Firearms, as I said really early on in this stream, is that they're very noisy, but they're also very effective, with some caveats. Um, your aiming and your aiming skill heavily drives how effective you are with a firearm, and um, when you're really low skill, you're only going to be able to use shotguns well and handguns sort of well. And then as you level up firearms, you can start to effectively use rifles. But as a aiming level zero, 
character. If I picked up a rifle, I couldn't hit anything to save my life. And therefore, they're not really... Outside, I would say, of shotguns and maybe some firearms, some low-caliber handguns, firearms are not, especially the rifles, are not especially useful for low-level players. Shotguns, due to the weird mechanics of leveling up um, skills, are particularly effective in leveling up your, your aiming skill because of the multiplied um, benefit of hitting multiple targets at once. Because shotguns can blast like three to five people at once, you will level up your aiming skill fastest with a shotgun. Um, I happen to have a double barrel shotgun, which is not great at leveling up your firearm skill. Uh, the pump shotguns are far better for that. The double barrel shotguns only give you two shots. So the stats of um, the firearms to be considered would be how difficult it is to aim. So rifles are the hardest. Um, shotguns are the easiest. And then how loud they are. Uh, rifles and shotguns are very loud. Handguns are quieter for the most part. I mean, there are like deagles, which are pretty loud, but generally speaking. And then um, how fast they are to reload. So bunch of bunch of different factors all to be considered when you're ever going to try to use them. All right. Now, well, I don't know where that came from. Don't recall picking up a uh, Walkman. Uh, some of this stuff, the fresh produce needs to go in the freezer. So I'm going to pick that back up. Be a little bit more careful about what I dump. I'll even put pickles in the freezer, even though they don't spoil. Some things that would spoil don't, like pickles or margarine. So let's let's uh, load up the freezer first. I'll keep the carrots and the banana on me. So we got like 50 kilos of frozen goods now, which is pretty good. Uh, this sheet I'm going to add here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent zombies from the street to see me easily by blocking off those windows. You can do that with sheets. You can do that with metal. You can do that with, um, with uh, uh, wooden boards. And anything I don't need encumbering me is going to go on the ground as well, including the firearms. If you're a new player I if and you want to mess around with firearms to f get the feel, um, I welcome you to do that. But with the caveat, like, don't expect to live. There is definitely a strategy to use firearms, which is to like go to a really wide open field and round up a bunch of enemies, a bunch of zombies and like fire it off and not draw too much attention. And if you're really good, maybe purposely draw attention. Like if you want to clear out a city block, a shotgun is certainly going to be an effective tool to draw everyone around you to you. So they can be useful in that way. Um, but if you, like I said, if you don't know what you're doing, more than likely it's going to make a lot of noise, draw a lot of things to you and then you'll die. Which can be fun, but not if you're trying to survive in the long term. All right. There's a few zombies that are mm, getting close enough to the grocery store that I want to clear them out. One thing I did not find on my search was a carpentry book. So I am still looking. And that's pretty typical. You don't always find what you're looking for. Sometimes it takes some effort. So over here we've got um, uh, a motel. Um, motels are typically going to have like toiletries and towels. Um, they're not, they're high risk, low reward loot spots, generally speaking, as they have a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily need. Uh, 
and they often are chock full of zombies. And then also wouldn't hurt for me to search for a car. I know where some gas cans are, and I can siphon fuel. So having a working set of wheels really will would open up the um, loot potential. I'd be able to drive out of town and go to points of interest and then come back home way more effectively if I had a running car. So initially what I want to check for is if there's any like keys in open glove boxes. I'll even um I'll even take this gas can and lug wrench at this point because I have somewhere to store them. If you right click on a car with a gas can on you, you will get a siphon fuel um submenu prompt once you're close enough to the vehicle, which is a good indicator. It, it lets you sort of skip the step of like does this car have fuel? Um so the cars that I don't have access to, the ones that are locked up, I'm only really going to consider smashing a window and breaking in if I like the stats of the car. Basically, if the car is intact enough to warrant smashing it. Otherwise, it's like, I don't need a junker. Because if the car is in really bad working order, it's going to get disabled very, very quickly and going to be a bit of a death trap. And you don't really need a death trap, especially given that cars let you drive far distances. So having a death trap that breaks down on you when you're like way, 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 way afar from where you live can really suck. Uh, so this car has a little bit of gasoline. So I'm going to fill up my gas can. Actually, before I do that, I'll take the gas can out of the backpack. No, no, stop siphoning. Before I do that, I might as well see if it has keys. And it does. Dash Elite Key. So, this is my car now. And a map to Louisville. So the Dash Elite is a, um, it's a sports car, which is kind of not ideal for your first car. Like, ideally, your first car would be like a van or a truck. High storage capacity, doesn't drive so fast, so you don't go boom into a tree. Um, there's three types of cars. There is sport. Um, there is like standard and there's heavy. And they all, sh so the way that works is they all share parts with, uh, they, of the category, the type, they all share parts. So for instance, if I wanted new tires for this car, I could only install sport tires. So if I found tires for standard or heavy, I couldn't put them on this car. So the reason why a, sports, a sport car is not ideal is there aren't a lot of sport cars. They're kind of rare. Um, they're a bit of a trophy item as a result. Um, this car doesn't look that sexy, but like it has very high engine power, 500 horsepower, and is very lightweight. So it's weight to engine power means it goes real fast. Um, in my opinion, like trucks and econo vans and the like are ideal because they have a lot of storage capacity and heavy vehicles are pretty common. So they're easier to maintain. Whereas this sport car is far less common and way harder to maintain as a result. But given that I have no other car, um, you know, it, it's way better to have a set of wheels than not have any set of wheels. So what I want to do is I want to pull that into the, um, the open bay behind the grocery store once the zombies in this parking lot are cleared. And then also to make sure that the other cars here are not serviceable. Because it's possible that one of these other cars um, can be used. So here's another annotated map. And this is to Riverside. And this annotated map doesn't actually tell me anything. Doesn't have any like intel about what to loot. So what it essentially is, is just like a map to, to Riverside, which is fine. I'm also going to grab the tissue in case I get sick. Because uh, you can sneeze into the tissue. So if you do catch a, a just a seasonal cold from being out in the rain or being hypothermic or whatever, um, this helps to prevent your sneezes and coughs from being super loud. Uh, because if you do get sick, you're going to make a lot of noise. So no keys to this. And I'll grab the matches. There was a key in the ignition here. So I have keys of this black Nyla as well, um, which I should put in my key ring. 
And this car is probably going to be, unless it's really in terrible working order, probably going to be the car I go with because it's a standard car and it's going to be way easier to maintain than the sport car. So, engine is not too super loud. It's not very good quality, but not super loud. The battery is in bad condition, but at least it has a charge. Um, it's out of gas, but I can siphon. Its muffler is average. Its wheels could use some love. Uh, but once I find a jack, um, I already have a lug wrench. So once I find a jack, I can replace the wheels fairly easily. I saw that you asked a question, how easy is it to replace a broken car window? It's very easy, but it depends upon your mechanics skill. So uninstalling a window, um, you have a chance to either successfully uninstall it or damage it. And the higher your mechanic skill is, the less likely you are to just damage it. So like this car, for instance, has a really banged up front left window, which is something I would want to replace pretty early on because that's the most important one because that's where I sit. Uh, it also has a pretty bad front right tire um, that is in really low condition, uh, which is going to pop pretty early on. The suspension and the brakes are less important. They don't take a lot of wear and tear. Typically, the, the, the parts in your vehicle that take the most wear and tear. When you do impacts, it will be your trunk and your hood that take a lot of damage. And then once the trunk and hood are destroyed, um, once the hood is destroyed, your engine starts taking damage. And then your tires also take a lot of damage. So the condition of your tires, trunk, and hood are probably the most important overall. And these can be repaired with um, metalworking skill if you have the materials or uninstalled and replaced if you have the mechanic skills. So maintaining a car is like another big task in, in uh, Project Zomboid, which, you know, um, you typically pour a lot of effort into. So this car is in 55% condition, it's fine. So this is gonna be my daily driver, I think, just because it's, um, uh, it, it's a standard car in, of the cars in this lot, standard, 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 sport. So, most cars are going to be standard or heavy. Sports are just really rare. How hard is it to fix an engine? Much, much, much harder. You need a pretty... You need to be a level 5 mechanic skill to fix an engine, which is quite the grind. And you can only fix the condition of the engine. You can't actually change its loudness or, or uh, its um, quality. As I mentioned before, those are immutable stats, uh, whereas the condition is its repair stat. So I siphoned all the gasoline out of the sport car. And what I can do at this point is mark down that there's a sport car that I have. Uh, so I'm going to add a note here. Sport car with key. No gas. Right? So I know that there's a sport car there that I have the key, but not, not gasoline. Can't replace? No. You cannot replace engines. So what you're ideally looking for is a car that has a nice engine. Um, so like this engine has is soft, has a loudness of 37, so it's not very loud, but it's a quality of 30, uh, 43. Uh, this muffler is nicer though. So once I have a little bit more um, mechanic skill, I could try to take this muffler off of this taxi and put it in the other car because this muffler helps to muffle the engine noise. It has a less than a, a 1.0 modifier, so it will reduce the noise from the engine. But right now what I'm doing is I'm just checking for more gas. Um, I, there's also a gas station nearby that I can um, go to to top up the tank. Uh, I don't currently have the gas station revealed, but like I know where it is. So you can definitely use your car as a battering ram. 
But eh, I wouldn't. In vanilla Project Zomboid, cars get destroyed fairly quickly. And if you're not very careful about how you're using it as a battle ram, it can become a metal coffin very quick. Because if you're using it as a battle ram and it breaks down on you and you're surrounded by zombies, well, well, there's no way to get out of that. Not really. As, as soon as you leave the, um, as soon as you leave the car, if you're surrounded by zombies, you're dead. You're just dead. So what I'm doing here is I'm, um, moving the corpses out of the, let's call it a garage. So I can park in here. And I also, I need to search those cardboard boxes, because I'm sure those cardboard boxes has a lot more food uh, that are perishable. And I think I left the car running, and given how little gas I have, I'm going to turn it off. No, no, I turned it off. Also, don't leave your lights on or radio on, as it will drain the battery. So now I'm just dumping the corpses into this dumpster to delete them so that they don't get me sick and they um, don't self-resurrect. Um, and I should probably do that as well for all the corpses that are in the grocery store so that the inside of the grocery store is secure. I do have that open window um, that could use boarding up. But having a car is going to be pretty helpful. Now, this car has a pretty beat-up trunk. It does it does have some, some tools, but it has a pretty beat-up trunk, which means it doesn't have a lot of space. It only has 29 space, whereas, like, you know, a really nice tr uh, truck or van might have, like, 100 kilo, 150 kilo storage. Uh, but this one does have three seats other than the passenger, uh, other than the driver's seat. What I will say about that is... I don't, unless I have to, I don't typically fill the passenger seat. Um, and the reason is, if I have a lot of zombies on the driver's side door, I can switch to the passenger seat and pop out. But if the passenger seat is full of stuff, that no longer is an option. And then I'm tr more trapped. Then I would have to fumble around to try to empty out the passenger seat before the zombies break the driver's side window. And that's a lot more panic than is worth filling a seat up. Whereas the rear seats, you can fill up without too much risk. Um, so I did say I wanted to remove the corpses from here. So um, I'm going to do that. Uh, we are going to clean up the grocery store. Moles, thank you for the resub. Oh, and I missed a dog treat. Hey, bud. I'm also going to do something else. Because I typically get attacked from the front of the grocery store, as it is the... Uh, it's way... more visible out that way. I'm going to move this dumpster... Oh, no, I can't, because I don't have the carpenter skill. I forgot about that. I was, I was originally going to move the dumpster just to where the corpses are. Because the corpses weigh 20 kilos. I know. It's weird. Um, and the dumpster holds 30. Whereas these individual trash cans only hold 10. So you can't fit a corpse in there to delete. So only those big dumpsters are corpse dumpsters. I kind of feel like Agent 47 in just like loading the dumpster full of corpses. It's a very Agent 47 thing to do. If you know the Hitman series. So with this car, um, there's a few different things I could do with it. If I was a new player, I would probably try to um, find more car maintenance items, like a jack, uh, so that I could jack the car up and switch tires out. Um, 
and then also maybe try to get a replacement for the driver's side uh, window because the driver's side window is in pretty bad shape and therefore poses a risk to me as the driver. Um, but as a slightly more experienced player, uh, the alternatives to its usage might be to take it and drive it to a nearby gas station after having looted the spare cans that I know of. So as a little reminder, I know where four gas cans are over here, which is a considerable amount of gas storage Four four spare cans, depending on like the fuel efficiency of your vehicle is enough to get you just about anywhere on the map using it to refuel your, your car. So the alternative usage of the, um, of the car is to, you know, grab those gas cans that I know of, grab all the cans in the local area, drive over to the gas station and completely fill both the car, its internal uh, fuel storage, and also the, um, and also all of the gas cans that I can, uh, because once power is cut, you can't use gas stations either, because gas stations require electricity to run the pumps. So these cabbages are already stale. I'm not going to bother moving them. These cherries are still fresh. So th these are boxes that like I had overlooked that first night. And as you can see, um, some of the some of the continents contents uh, have already started to go bad because fre the 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 produce goes bad at different rates. So cabbage is some of the first to go. Um, and I probably should have made an effort to move. This is almost certainly more fresh produce than I can even reasonably consume before they go spoiling. So it's not super important for me to move this stuff. It's just like good practice because it's better to have food and not need it than to need food and not have it. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 28th as a result of a viewer's choice poll. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but for this series, I'm not taking feedback. If you would like to join my online gaming community, which is a great place to ask me questions about this game and others, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for tuning in. A big thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I really appreciate it. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow zombie slayers.